Hello, dear brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Mother and Refuge of the End Times. Today, we would like to share with you a story about life after death experience, my visit to heaven, hell, and purgatory by Sandra Abrahams, who had a near-death experience many years ago. This originally appeared on the Signs and Wonders for Our Times website on December 19th, 2019. Sandra Abraham writes, I am the second youngest of five children. I was raised Catholic. My mom was Catholic and my dad converted after my mother passed on. In my 20s, I married Kenneth Abrahams and we had three children, Melanie, Jeffrey, and Karen. Every Sunday I went to church, but I was a pew warmer. After Vatican II, I had a bad opinion of the church. I was disappointed and disillusioned with our church. However, I was devoted to the Blessed Mother and prayed the rosary, a devotion I learned from my mother. The first time Mary ever appeared to me, I was five years old. She told me that my father had been healed through her intercession. She also made a dead rose beautiful again, and that was in a vase near me. I realized that if you prayed to her, she listened. As a child, my school was next to the Catholic Church. Every day after school, I would run across the street to the church and go see the statue of Our Lady at La Salette. I would burn a candle, hoping she would stop crying like the statue. I would then genuflect to Jesus and run out the door and go home. In January of 1970, I had her hysterectomy when I was 30 years old due to cervical cancer. After the surgery, the doctors gave me medicine that was new on the market at the time, and I had a reaction to it in the hospital. My husband came in and picked me up and brought me back to our house in Houston, Texas. My mother-in-law had been watching the kids. I went back to my bedroom, and I thought I was having a stroke. My mother-in-law called my husband, and he came home. That was my introduction into hell in so many different ways. The doctors told my husband to bring me back to the hospital immediately. I couldn't breathe, my heart was exploding in my chest, and I had my head back trying to get air into my lungs. My husband brought me to the emergency room, and the doctor didn't know what to give me as an antidote. The doctor thought I was going to go into cardiac arrest, and the doctor started doing chest compressions, and suddenly I was staring down at my body, watching everything happen. I heard the doctor start cursing and yelling at the nurses. He started yelling a code and saying, I'm losing her. Suddenly, I was pulled through the ceiling and I felt myself going from one dimension to another. I can't explain it or fully describe it, but I was yanked through my body and pulled into a tunnel. I could see light and I saw angels and then souls in transit. I could see a tiny little light ahead and I wanted to get to that light. As I got closer and closer, it got brighter and brighter, and that light was Christ. I remember him putting his arms around me. He wasn't a spirit, he was real. I was just my soul, and it was dirty. I remember and could feel his love, an all-consuming love. It was in every pore of my being. I felt his love and compassion. Being a parent, I thought I knew love, but his love doesn't even compare. His love consumes you and you can feel it. It is the most beautiful, unusual sensation I've ever had. He told me that he was going to show me things. He turned, and he moved his hand. As he moved his hand, I saw a review of my life from the time that I was a tiny child up until the age 30. It was almost like a movie screen. I saw every time I did something good, and I felt his love and joy. When I did something bad, I felt his hurt, an intense pain that I caused him. He showed me my entire life, but he never stopped loving me. His mercy is enormous. Explaining this is very hard. I came face to face with Jesus. He is a more beautiful person than any picture I have ever seen. He radiates love. Jesus asked me if I was satisfied with my life, and I told him no. He said I would have more opportunities. Then he said he was going to show me something else. He showed me hell. It was horrible. It never ends. It is for all eternity. It is just horrible. You can't ever get out. I was so distraught about the souls going into hell. The souls looked like something in your worst dreams. 
almost like monsters. They were cursing God and never stopped. It was like a volcano. You can't imagine what these souls looked like. I cried out, I will pray for them, and Jesus shook his head. He showed me a horrible man who would curse God, and he was mean, cruel, and prideful. He would slam doors in people's faces on purpose. He would see an animal and deliberately run over it on the street. The man's friends showed him that he needed to find God, and the man said, I don't need to find God, I am God. The man was in a car accident, and as his soul detached from his body, our Lord appeared to him one last time and asked him two things. Do you love me? Truly love me? Are you sorry for your sins? The man cursed our Lord. Jesus pointed and the soul's face went into the fire. The man did not recognize Jesus because of his pride. To this day, I don't know who this man was. I have never forgotten this. I knew right away that I didn't want to go to hell. The suffering is so intense there. Then Jesus showed me purgatory. I called purgatory the gray zone for years because of the bleakness and grayness. There are levels, but I don't know how many. The bottom is very dark and very black. Most souls that end up there have committed very serious sins and the suffering there is intense. There are fires, but they are fires within souls cleansing them. As a soul is cleansed and purified, they begin to move up to different levels of gray and up into the light. Then they are crystal clean and released into heaven. I saw my great uncle, Uncle Creighton, who died when I was four or five years old. He committed suicide by shooting himself. He was in the lowest level of purgatory. His soul recognized mine, and he asked me to pray for him. I heard his cry. He came another 20 years later after this experience and let me know he had been released. We have to pray for the souls in purgatory, offer masses, rosaries, and sacrifices. That is how the souls move out of purgatory, as they can't pray for themselves. They can pray for us, but they can't pray for themselves. It's us who need to pray for them. There are billions of souls in purgatory. Not one soul knows that there is another soul around them. They are completely isolated. They know why they are there. They can't take comfort in other people. There is no sense of time. There are no clocks. After I saw the bottom level of purgatory, Jesus showed me heaven. The souls in heaven are radiant. I never saw anyone's feet. They moved around and the smells were out of this world. The music was beautiful, thousands of voices praying to God. I met my mother's mother who died many years before I was born. She thanked me for naming my oldest daughter after her. She gave me a personal message to give to my mother. She told me to remember to pray the rosary. She looked like she was 30 years old. Then the Blessed Mother appeared with St. Michael. The Blessed Mother is gorgeous. When she speaks, it's like tiny bells chiming. It's so hard to explain. She told me all the times I prayed to her, she had heard every prayer. All prayers are heard. St. Michael was something else. I remember thinking that I wanted to be on his side. I saw prayers of people carried back and forth to heaven by the angels. The reason why we don't get what we pray for sometimes is that something we ask for may not be for the good of our soul. Jesus is looking at things for the good of our soul. I saw Padre Pio. I saw another saint who looked like a nun, but I have no idea who she was. I asked Jesus about his beating on the cross. He said that people today are putting more scars and wounds on his body. He showed me things that were to come. He showed me abortions. I saw billions of bloody, torn bodies. Jesus started to cry. He said, you see, this is what mankind thinks of my Father's gift of life. They destroy it. I didn't understand at the time, but he said I would later on. After that, he showed me euthanasia and said many would die in hospitals and nursing homes. Then he showed me clear tanks with babies in them that all looked alike and they were attached to umbilical cords, but there were no wombs. Their eyes were blank. Jesus said man will try to create life and they will destroy many. They cannot create life because only my father can create and destroy life. Only he can put the soul into the body. I was shown that at the time of conception, the soul enters the body. A guardian angel is assigned to that soul at conception. 
a baby that has Down syndrome or another disability is not a mistake. They are here on a mission to show us compassion and love. Jesus said, My Father makes no mistakes. He knows every creation he has ever made. Jesus put his arms around me and kissed me on the forehead and touched me where my heart was and said, You will remember everything I have told you. The day will come in the future that you will speak on these things and tell my people you will bring back my lost sheep. I looked down and saw the filth of my soul. I told Jesus I loved him, and I was slammed back into my body. I opened my eyes, and the doctor was looking at me. It took me two weeks to talk to the doctor and ask him what happened in the emergency room. I told the doctor how his cursing was wrong. He told me that I had died, and he didn't think he was going to be able to get me back. I only died for about two minutes. When Roe v. Wade came out three years later after my death experience, I knew we were going to have to fight for the babies. I have been giving talks all over the United States and Canada about my experience to wake people up and bring them back to God. We are in a crisis. This is not the end of the world. This is an end of the times as we know it. God is renewing the world. After my death experience, souls came to me to ask for prayers. I didn't always know who I was praying for. One night a soul came to me from purgatory and asked me to pray for him because the prayers people were saying for him had stopped. His name was Victor. I announced on a TV show that I was interviewed on that whoever is related to Victor needs to keep on praying for him. I later got a call from two sisters in New York and they said that it was their dad. The day I had been on TV was the day of the anniversary of his death. They had stopped praying for him. They started praying for him again and later found out that he had eventually been released from purgatory. Anytime you do something out of love, without any idea of getting anything back, this shortens your time in purgatory. Suffer with grace and don't complain. This shortens your time. Offer it up for those souls who don't know God. Many people who have had cancer and offer up their suffering don't spend much time in purgatory. Many children with cancer are the ones who are the best at offering up their suffering. They have a special place in heaven. The Blessed Mother and the Child's Guardian Angel always come for them. Purgatory in the afterlife should be emphasized by our priests. We need to pray for the souls there. Our priests need to talk about hell and purgatory because they are real. 99% of people will go to purgatory, but there are levels. Our young people are into so much trouble with drugs and alcohol. We are given a free will, and God will never interfere with our free will. We don't hear many priests or people speaking about heaven, hell, and purgatory. What are we afraid of? Priests don't realize how they are going to be judged as the leaders of the people. If they only knew the responsibility they have as shepherds in all the gifts and graces they have been given, many of them are not using these gifts. I've had many seminarians calling me with questions about the afterlife because many seminaries are not teaching about the afterlife. God's mercy and his love are immense. The Divine Mercy Chaplet is beautiful. God is always showing us his mercy. He asks so little of us. Let us pray that we return his love with our prayers and acts of mercy so that one day we may be united with him in heaven. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, Lord, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Amen.